let's see how we can protect our network using a PPSK authentication mechanism. And if you consider our scenario in here, so our Corp1 network policy, we currently have a WPA2 PSK protected network and a 802.1x protected network. So we have two SSIDs. And what we said about PSK is it's not something that's actually uh, suitable for an enterprise environment due to the um, nature of the PSK-based security. So how do we provide access for non-corporate devices? Because uh, with 802.1x EAP, we are counting on those users to have an account in our local Active Directory. Uh, and obviously guests and uh, devices, like IoT devices, probably won't have a, an, an account in Active Directory. So how do we provide, for example, guest access that is secure? Uh, we will use PPSK for that. So let's open up the Corp1 network policy. And let's go to wireless networks and add another Wi-Fi network. Let's call this SSID PPSK1. Select private pre-shared key as the method of authentication. And if you look at the configuration guide on the left-hand side, you will see that the thing missing is a user group. And you can have multiple user groups of, uh, associated with the same SSID. And the idea of user groups is it's very similar to organization units or uh, user groupings on the radio server. And, and the whole idea is a user group or users and passwords within that same user group will map to the same network access control rules. For example, if you have users that belong to a group called guests, you will map a user profile called guests to those users, and you can have another set, which is called IoT, and that will assign a different user profile with different network access control policy. So let's, look at how, let's take a look at how this works. So let's add a new user group, and we'll call it guests. We will use cloud as the storage, uh, database storage for the PPSKs. That basically implies that the PPSKs are stored within Extreme Cloud IQ. We were not using any advanced workflows in here. We're just providing basic PPSK connectivity, so we won't do any uh, CWP register or PCG, uh, which is beyond this class. For the password policy, we'll just leave it as it is, just letters. Um, and if you generate a PPSK, it's going to be 10 characters long. The PPSK never expires. However, if you wanted to, you could say it's only valid for a certain period of time. And for the delivery mechanism, we will use both text message and email. So if a new user is created, uh, if, if they're provided their phone number, we will send them a text message with their PPSK, and we will send them an email, to, uh, an email message containing the PPSK as well. So let's save this user group and add some users. We will add a user called test PPSK. And we will generate a password. Or we'll generate the PPSK, just save it for later. And down here, if you provide email and text message, uh, these, this, these are the communication mechanisms or distribution mechanisms of how we would send this user a PPSK. Um, and this same thing can be achieved by incorporating this workflow alongside a cap to web portal where they would provide this information themselves and then in return receive a PPSK. Or you can write your own application using identity APIs. So let's just stick with this uh, one simple user. Make sure we have the password for later. Okay, save. So now this user group has one user. Uh, and if we scroll down to user access settings uh, or our access control policies, we see we currently have a default user profile, which we said is not a good practice. So let's select user profile quarantine as a default. And then, again, apply a different user profile for various clients and user groups. And what we're going to do is we're going to, based on the user group membership, we will add a rule that says if a, 
if a PPSK or a user belongs to the user group guests, they will go to user profile 8. So we're using user profile 8 and the assignment rule is going to be guests. Click plus and instead of radius attributes, we're now using user groups. So if a user is within the user group guests, then we will assign them to this VLAN, which is VLAN 8 with the corresponding user profile. And in the user profile itself, we could configure firewall rules, uh, traffic tunneling, if this is something that we wanted. So if you wanted to tunnel gas traffic to a central point, this is where we would do it. Uh, availability schedule and everything that comes along with net network access control policy within the user profile. Currently, we'll just stick to the VLAN and let the backend network infrastructure figure out everything else, including, uh, yeah, so all, everything is done based on VLAN, and then upstream, we have a firewall that will restrict access as necessary. Okay, um, we could add more user groups and do more mappings, and if we have a user group in, uh, in this list and there's no corresponding assignment rule, then this user will hit a quarantine VLAN. Okay, let's save. And away we go. So, now we have another SSID with authentication time being private PSK. And let's deploy this policy to our access point. Let's do upload. Let's do a delta. And wait for it to finish. And then we'll inspect whether we are seeing successful radius RATSEC proxy communication. So, because we only have one AP in this network, we expect this access point to become the RATSEC proxy. And we'll just need to wait for the configuration update to finish. Go back to our monitoring or management view. Okay. Might take a couple of minutes for this to refresh. Okay, so show IDM command does tell us that this is the IDM proxy AP, the IDM is enabled, and it's actually securely connected to the uh, cloud server. So all we're waiting for is for the icon to pop up here in this monitoring view. There we go. So this access point now is the RATSEC proxy server. And now we will connect a client device to the PPSK SSID. Okay, so the device is now connected. Let's refresh the statistics. Okay, so we have one device connected. Let's open up the client monitor view. Okay, so it's an Android phone connected to test PPSK and it's in VLAN 8 according to the rules we've configured on that SSID. And if we go under users, we'll see that the PPSK also provides the username and so it provides the identity, user group, um, and you see that we've been able to apply the network's access control rules or a user profile uh, based on the identity of this user, or actually based on the user group membership of this particular user. And we could expand this by adding more user groups and more user profiles and rules to the SSID, uh, but currently we'll stick with this single guest user group scenario because in the lab we're using this for providing guest access and individual PPSKs for multiple guest users.